Well, I went and got a tag this afternoon and me and Jake are in the parking lot of a completely different public land area that, than where we have been hunting all this time and where Aaron shot his buck. And as you can see, the terrain looks completely different than where we have been hunting in that river bottom. So we've been looking at this spot on the map and it looks like it's got a lot of the same things, even though it's different terrain, it looks like it's got a lot of the same things as where Aaron shot his buck. It's got water, it's got oaks, which are just starting to drop, we noticed and it's got a bean field that's close by. And we're not gonna be able to see the bean field tonight, but we'll be able to see this bottom that has a creek running through it with water. And if we don't observe anything tonight, we're just gonna push further back in the morning and get into the timber a little bit. But tonight is gonna be a little less aggressive and we're gonna kind of do the same thing as we did with Aaron's spot and kind of mm -hmm. start further back. And if we, we'll just inch our way in every day. We're gonna get going, we got a good breeze. We're gonna try to use that when, on the walk in. I'm sure it'll calm down here after a while. So we're gonna walk down this path and see if we can find a spot to set up tonight. Well, we just got set up in the tree stand, me and Jake, and we were coming into this new area and walking down pretty much the main trail and probably 200, 300 yards into walking in here, we bumped something right off the trail. It must have been bedded down and it sounded pretty big when it was running away. He was bedded right over my shoulder here and there's this little pond that's in there. We think he was probably bedded down right around that pond and when we bumped him he took off he headed for this thicker timber line where we expect deer to be bedded so we swung around real quick and got set up in this tree we're only about 12 foot off the ground but we got a good good trail coming right down in front of us about 15 20 yards where a bunch of ridges kind of meet up and we're hoping the deer are bedded up on this thicker hillside with the wind coming over their back and then they'll eventually work their way down right through this little opening down into this river bottom to feed later on. If they do end up coming down like we think they will, they're gonna be about eye level with us, so I, I'm keeping my bow in my hand and my release ready, so. Got the ghillie suit on too, so. Taking all the precautions tonight.
a feeling he might follow that other ridge up. If he's the one that was bedded there. Shit. <laughs> oh my god! Yes! Good shot! Good shot! Was it? I don't know. I think it's like... Oh my god! <laughs> god. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh my god! Perfect! Did they try to get shot? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he was out. He came down here and he's slower. I know. And he comes right down the pipe. Oh. <laughs> that was a nice spot. I know. Way bigger than we needed. Wide. <laughs> Way bigger than we needed. It might have been the buck we bet. It early. might have been. Push. And I he mean, might have been going like that, that too that we, or something. That we, deer that we pushed. Stop. <sighs> My arrow was just... And that whisker biscuit was just going because <laughs> I, I was trying to draw and then he was like looking around and then I was like stopped so then I had tension on the arrow so I was like oh man I didn't realize how big he was until I got it I could tell it and I felt like we were after big bucks <laughs> <laughs> no give orb a call go in there yeah. See that picture in there? Yeah, it's not no one. <laughs> <laughs> he's hard horned and he's pretty wide. <laughs> no. Yeah, and I've, I think I hit him pretty good. No, you did He not. was like right below the tree. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Warm, it's so perfect. You're kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God. Really? Yeah. yeah. You're right below the tree. You guys hung a stand? Yeah. Yeah, we're like. 10, 12 foot off the ground. How far shot? Five yards. Five yards, probably. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? <laughs> Dude, it's sweet. I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> I can't right, believe well, that. come get me. Let's go, let's go do it. All yep, right. Sounds good. That buck worked his way all the way down that hill and took forever and really got my nerves going, that's for sure. 
but he was like five yards right below the tree. I think I made a real good shot on him. He mule kicked and barreled out of here. So <sighs> called Warb up and he's at McDonald's right now editing. So we're gonna have to run back there probably and get him because we only got one vehicle down here in Kentucky. Well, we just climbed down from the tree. Now we gotta go take a look at the Cerro. So hopefully it's got some good blood on it. Where was he, like right here? Oh yeah. Oh no. Ain't good. We'll sneak out here and watch it. Wanna smell it? Oh no. You don't think it? Mm, smells like it might be. Just don't wipe any of that off the fletching. Jake, you think maybe it went through the, like this? Yeah. And it hit lungs, maybe? Might have. We'll have to go watch it. Well, we just came up to the arrow, and it looks like it might be a little bit further back than what we thought. Looks like guts and smells like it. We're going to go back and look at it on the big screen and see what we think. Oh, man, that is not what you want to see. He ain't punched shut awful bad. No, there's, there's, there's some I just stomach fluid and bow in there. But. Went back, grabbed Aaron and Scott, looked over the footage on the big screen on the computer. And initially, Ted, as you can see, we kind of freaked out a little bit, but Ted thought yeah. he made a really good shot on the buck. And uh, once we watched it back on the viewfinder on the camera, which is pretty small, we thought it was a good shot. And then we got down, though, and the arrow doesn't smell very good. So that got us a little concerned. Ted's got the arrow right here, and it had a purplish blood on him. What we think it might be is he clipped one lung, and then it exited through the liver. And unfortunately, with it being this warm out, we don't have the luxury of leaving him for a very long time, because if he is expired right now, we need to get on him fast so that meat doesn't spoil. So we're going to head in there real quiet and see if we can't find some blood. A lot of people don't realize it, but I mean, it's a safety factor. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like you've got two big female copperheads within 10 yards of where you watch back on the video where the steer piled in. Uh, folks, just so you know, there's a big copperhead right there in the weeds. She was laying right next to my boot when I stepped right there. And Scott just saw another copperhead right over here. She's over there to the right. She was moving away from me. We're not really finding any blood, and you know, if it's a double long hit, then you're gonna be finding blood, and it's gonna be an easy blood trail. And at this point, all we're finding is big copperhead snakes, so not going too well. Where we at, um, Aaron, on the map, on Onyx, like right here? Well, we were just about to back out, and we just walked up this little ridge here, and Jake hollered blood, and there's a little bit, you can see right here, and, and down to something now. right over here. There's a fair amount of it right here. Looks real dark, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, blood this way, Jake. Yeah. We're starting to find some more blood. It seems to be getting more and more every time. We're getting back into this digger's part. We're suspecting he might bed down there. So we're just creeping along slow and quiet. He's laying in here alive. Hopefully we'll see his eyes. But if not, hopefully we'll see his white belly. That'd be ideal. Look right there. We've made it about 250 yards so far. He's just walking, you can tell by his track right through here.
<laughs> yes. Thanks, Scott. Oh my God. I'm so happy for you, man. You were so down in the dumps. Oh, I was, I was no down No blood. I didn't think, oh, I figured yeah. if we were going to find him, it would definitely be, we got a little seat check. It'd definitely be tomorrow sometime, I figured. Mm -hmm. If we were going to find him. We were almost going to wait till tomorrow. That's not as bad. That's not as far back as I thought it would be. No. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Man, I'm, I'm happy for you. I, mean, I am so happy for you. <laughs> hey, so, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so awesome. Like, oh, I mean, early season. Pup, I mean, man. Ted, think about this for just a second. Oh, no. You hunted an hour and a half of <laughs> Kentucky deer season, okay? An hour and a half. You've killed the biggest uh, buck this year. Yeah, ever best, shot with a bow, huh? Mm -hmm. so. Oh, Wait till you see how, how much they lost it in that <laughs> tree. Oh, oh, I saw God. a little bit of it. I mean, we went to lost it that much probably had me known what we were about to go on. But Yeah, I thought when we when I shot him, I thought, oh, man, he's going to be done. That's something but, to keep in mind, too, guys. Anybody that's watching, every single time that you shoot one, you got to pay so much attention, you know, yeah. immediately after that. Mm -hmm. And then you, once you get down, especially if you don't, if you don't see them go down, you can't. You can't take anything for granted mm -hmm. at that point. Because the way that he was oriented at the shot, like when Scott and I were watching that footage back a while ago, his hind end is slightly higher than his front end. And you're above him and he's real close. So your angle is, is going down. Yeah. You probably hit him on the last rib on the opposite mm -hmm. side, you know, just below center, center mass in his body. And it came out right there on the belly line. So just like yeah. you said, yeah. one, probably one lung clip liver, bottom of the stomach. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, he's been dead for a while, granted. You know, or yeah. you could have even it's potentially right. clipped the back of that other lung. But if you don't deflate them both and double lung them, they're going to mm. throw you for a loop a lot of times, yeah. like this guy did. I mean, we didn't find blood. How When we was up there finding all them dead gum well, copperheads. I we're, mean, we're 85, 90 yards in before blood picked up, you know. Yep. Jake is the man right now. He's your oh, VIP yeah. buddy. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... When well, you're uh, starting to walk out and Jake's like, oh, hey, there's blood yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah, that's not the, how I said yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was more excited than that. Yeah. So. But what the deer did is he went he went in the woods. When you last see him on camera, he dives off the edge of the, mm -hmm. those woods. And what he ended up doing was, was veering. As soon as he did that, where obviously the camera couldn't pick that up because he headed straight north. And that's in what, hindsight, what me and Ted absolutely did wrong was just freak out afterwards. We oh, should have yeah. sat there and listened. and. Mm -hmm. Looking back, that that is something we definitely did wrong. Yeah. Me and Zach did that same thing. You know, know, remember that hunt a few years ago when mm -hmm. he shot that buck and we ended up tracking for 18 hours or something? We completely lost it because we thought he was hit well. If they don't go down within sight, you better mark the last place that they were at, everything they were doing, you know, take a visual picture of it and really think about it. What we have the luxury of doing is looking at footage and we can tell in those few frames before the deer runs off that his tail's tucked between his, his rear end right so you immediately know like that's a sign that he's mortally yep. wounded yeah now and look at this here fellas mm -hmm. like I said when we was back there he, I cut his walking track mm -hmm. and that's really I bet you that's when he he started bleeding see he was running so fast down through there with a with the tiny hole exit hole coming out there that he's probably not slinging much blood you know he's not bleeding out of his mouth really to speak of because you didn't deflate both lungs. Mm -hmm. So you didn't start picking up on a bunch of blood until he started walking. Uh, I guarantee in, in volume, we didn't have a half a cup of blood. No, nope. no. But look at where shot. his legs are. Yeah. He, he came into the bedding area yeah. and he laid down and died in this spot. This yeah. is his first bed. Yeah. And that's why, if you notice, we're going so slow in there and you're looking out ahead mm -hmm. and we're scanning for blood. And that's because if you have a marginally hit deer of any kind, their first bed is going to be your highest odds chance of getting them. I mean, I think you're going to have a shot right through his liver. I think I, you're right. I, I don't think yeah. you've even clipped his lung. I think you're going to have just a straight up textbook 
trailing job on the liver shot. Yeah, you know that's what that bud looks like too, yeah. didn't you think? Yeah, I, I, I told blood? Jake. I was like, remember, I said I'll take this because it was to change. It's where he finally started to pump just a li just enough blood to where you realize that you know you, there's a chance now. So uh, uh, I don't think there's a happier person uh, in Kentucky right uh, now. To be honest, probably not. So. There's probably not many awake. <laughs> they're right about right probably not. not. So, so you're on the board. Your wind would have been going yeah. right at him <laughs> on the board. Wasn't Without it? the thermals, yes. Right. That's another interesting thing. Did you all talk about that at all? We talked about the thermals. Yeah, we the didn't thermals. talk about the fact that the wind direction for the day should have been going up that hill. Like, yes. It's, with the southeast wind, it should have been blowing right up towards where he was bedded at. But That's he didn't move until those thermals started dropping, so he couldn't smell you guys. Mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting. And I bet you guys, what what time did you get set up with both them stands? What was it five, probably? Or five, probably five, yeah. A little yeah. after. So that's right about that time, you know, five, six o'clock when the day winds are dropping off and the thermals start going to the valleys. That's pretty cool, man. Well, better get him tagged up. Yeah. And now we can wrangle another one back up we to the truck it. somehow. So Y'all can fight off the copperheads on the way back. Because I don't want no part of it. Scott's got his snake haters on, so. Yeah. I really don't like those snakes. No, do no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody more scared of snakes. Oh, uh, uh, oh, I just, I seen that copperhead just, I about stepped on it a while ago and just slowly slithered off through that grass. I mean, this grass weighs high. What I tell you for it walked in here? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that I didn't have any snake boots, and he's like, that's all right. There's a hospital nearby, and yep. I know where it is. That's right. I know the shortcut. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a ways to go yet. drive to the meat locker and then a uh, 45 minute back to the camp so not very good at math but it's gonna be a while before we get some sleep <laughs> same thing we did yesterday 551 just slipped over just got Ted's buck to the locker we usually butcher them ourselves but it's 3,000 degrees down here right now so we gotta take him to these these folks to chop them up yesterday morning we were here at 415 with my buck this morning we're here at, well, whatever that said. What was that, 5.51? We gotta unload it, and then uh, now we're back to camp. Oh yeah, this is the end of the Kentucky series, pretty much. And Zach shot a buck tonight. Oh yeah, and Zach shot one tonight in Nebraska. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's daylight over there, folks. It's coming in. Jake, you going with uh, no shoes, huh? Yeah. These guys are giving, we're gonna keep them in business. There you have it. We're here to pick up. We're going to Iowa.